Oftentimes in landscape photography, we really want to take more photos with our phone, but we're not quite sure the type of photos that we can actually take. We know all the ins and outs of our phone camera, and we've seen the type of picture that it can take, but how does that factor into landscape photography? And what are the type of compositions we can create with it? So today I decided to go over some of my photos and compare the photos that I've taken with my phone with the ones that I've taken with my camera and see which photos work well with my phone, which photos that I've taken with my camera would work well if I took them with my phone, and which photos I took with my camera that wouldn't turn out as well if I took them with my phone, and what are the limitations there. I will try to focus primarily on composition, but I will try to keep everything within the focal length possible by a phone camera these days, and I won't really go into more telescopic lenses for cameras either. Let's start off with the photos that are taken with my phone that actually work pretty well, and I'll go over why they actually work well. This photo is taken in New York City. It comprises of basically different buildings, and to lead into the main focus, which is the Empire State Building, right over here. And we see that we've used the curve of the building and the lines of the building as well to go all the way to the center where the main subject is located and because that's where the brightest part of the screen is that's why the attention is drawn towards the center as well by using the phone camera's wide angle field of view i've been able to kind of distort the sides as well to create a more dramatic effect of them leading in similarly here taken of another building in new york city i've used the phone camera wide angle lens again to accentuate the foreground and create a more dramatic rise to the building at the top. For this composition, I've gone pretty simple, pretty symmetrical leading up to the main subject, which is here. Now, moving on to more simple pictures. I love using my phone camera to create very minimalistic pictures because then I can hone in on specific patterns, hone in on specific details that I've found that I like. And because the phone camera just has a wider angle view, if I can limit it to very simple portions of the scene, then I'm guaranteed to create a much more aesthetically pleasing image. Similarly, I used my phone camera for this image, which is just a collection of different shapes and lines going one against the other, but placed in such a way where they kind of balance each other out well. I've also turned on black and white for this instead of color, just because there was a little bit more harsh lighting indoors, and I really just wanted to focus in specifically on the pattern. So still very minimalistic and able to be done with a phone camera. Again, focusing specifically on the shapes and the lines and the geometry that I've seen. It really works well because it takes very simplistic geometrical patterns and creates a very minimalistic photo out of that. And finally, I love using the wide angle aspect of my phone camera just because it helps me lead the viewer in much more easily and I'm able to accentuate the foreground element a lot more. So for this image, pretty simple, taken during daylight hours when there wasn't a lot of harsh shadow, so pretty early in the morning. Here you can clearly see the big foreground element which does appear larger than the building because I've used the wide angle view of it, but it works together because it leads you into the photo towards the back of the photo where the building actually is. I really enjoyed taking this picture because I was able to accentuate this portion of the forest floor and it would lead the viewer all the way back to these trees which is what i was trying to focus on and because there's not a lot of light coming in because it is during the summer there's a lot of leaves i don't really have to worry too much about harsh lighting on the forest floor and it just works well that way i'm able to use the wide angle aspect again to accentuate the foreground element more and although these trees are a little bit darker because of the limited dynamic range, I can't pull out all the details in the bark of those trees. I don't think I really need to because the whole idea, make the foreground interesting and let the background live in the world of shapes and patterns instead. For this image, again, focusing very much on what is in my foreground to create a strong foreground element and then using the light to draw the attention of the viewer. So using these patterns of repeating rocks leading to the strongest source of light, but really, really focusing in on the foreground to make it a lot more interesting. But then again, also using times of day when there isn't a lot of harsh light. Right now it's during golden hour and I'm using side light to accentuate the shadows within this to really make those ridges, make those details in the rocks pop out a lot more. Finally, with this image, it is a very simple foreground and it is a little bit blurry, but I don't think it matters that much because the obvious subject is right here. So this foreground just goes to add a little bit more story behind the feature that I'm trying to emphasize over here. And because again, this is shot during golden hour, the light isn't very harsh, and I'm able to capture those tiny little spots of light on these shells as well, which really, really enhance the photo. Now I wanna go over some of the photos I've taken with my phone camera, but also photos I've taken with my actual camera, which have similar compositions in them. These two photos look very similar to one another. Obviously the photo on the right is a little bit further back than the photo on the left, 
but the composition is still the same. I'm using strong leading line elements in the railing as well as the stones themselves. And I've raised the phone or the camera to a high enough level where there is a decent separation between the different rocks over here in the foreground. And so compositionally, they both look the same. And because this was an overcast day, lighting wasn't as big of a problem where I would have to deal with very harsh lighting. And it wasn't very dark either. So my phone camera could easily live up to my actual camera in terms of bringing out a lot of the details. Now here, I didn't purposely take a photo with my phone. I was using my phone to kind of figure out a good composition first, but you can see that I would have been easily able to take similar photos with my phone as well if I wanted to. The lighting isn't very harsh, so my phone's dynamic range would have been able to capture it, and it has a wide enough angle field of view that I would be able to also turn it into landscape and take a picture that way. And so I've used, again, similarly strong leading lines elements in both the photos to the mountain and the mountains themselves look pretty similar in size in both photos. Here, I wasn't actually taking a photo with my phone for the purpose of the photo, but just to kind of document my photography using my camera. But you can see by the capabilities of the photo on the right that it would have been able to capture a similar composition to the one on the left. The rocks fill the frame of the bottom as they do in this and the lighting isn't too harsh back here like it is over here. It's pretty soft. The colors of the tree are easily visible. So, and because this was shot again in a forest where there is more diffuse lighting and it was also shot during early parts in the day when there isn't a lot of harsh lighting, I was able to capture a composition and a photo that probably would have matched pretty close to the one that I've gotten with my camera on the left. Obviously, I've spent a little bit more time post-processing the image on the left. Compositionally, they look very similar and I would have been able to take that same picture with my phone camera. Even with that, there are still limitations that we find with phone cameras. And now I'll talk a little bit more about some of the photos that are a little bit more difficult to get with just your phone cameras and why that might be. Here, for example, very similar compositionally, but you can immediately see that there's a big difference between the two photos. And that is the long exposure effect being created over on the left, which I've taken with my actual camera. And that relies on me using a tripod or something similar. Now I could put my phone on a tripod and use the manual settings allowed in other camera apps. But even then the phone wouldn't allow me to dial in the settings to the same level where I would be able to create this effect over on the left. My phone camera only allows me up to one second exposure, whereas on the left, I've taken a photo with five second exposure. Now, I might not have had to go up to five seconds. I might've been able to create a similar effect with just one second, possibly, but that is a limitation, which is long exposures become a lot more difficult with phone cameras. And then here, this is one of my favorite images as well that I've taken on the left with my actual camera. But before that, I was composing the image using my phone. And while composing, I took some photos and you can see there's a big difference in a couple of different situations. Number one is the fact that the water is pretty smooth on the left, whereas it still has a lot of ripples on the right. And that's again, because of the long exposure drawback that we have with our phone cameras. The second biggest difference that we see is that it's nighttime and my phone camera will perform much more poorly than my actual camera. But compositionally, you could see that the photo does look pretty well. And as I see it on my phone, it does look pretty neat. It's just once you start making it bigger and bigger, like on a larger screen or printing it out, it does lose a lot more quality. Again, shot during nighttime, shot with long exposure, much more difficult to recreate with my phone camera. Now, nighttime photos, especially when you're dealing with starry skies, those get a lot more troublesome with your phone camera. Because there is such little light when you are taking photos in a place that is dark enough for the stars to be visible like this, your phone camera just can't perform well and you need a long exposure shot to capture more light within your camera. I would be able to compose my phone camera image the same, but it would be incredibly noisy. It would lose a lot more quality and I would not get the same effect that I would want out of it. So hopefully this video has given you a good idea of the type of photos you're actually capable of capturing with just your phone camera. Obviously these photos are not an upper bound to the creativity you could probably instill in your photography, but they are to set you on a path where you know that you are capable with the gear that you have with just your phone camera to take gorgeous photos if you're able to leverage the features in your phone camera in a more intelligent way. I do hope this inspired you and lowered the barriers you've had for taking photos with your smartphone and will allow you to create beautiful landscape images as well. All right, I'll see you next time, bye.